Hello everyone and thank you for registering yourself for this course on research methodology for planning and architectural studies. So at the beginning, let us understand what is research. So if we just Google it, so we get certain definitions, some definitions from the dictionary, some definitions from the researchers and many other organizations. And all of them, they are saying the same thing, maybe the language is little different. Say, I have picked up few of them for your reference. So if you just simply type research in Google and it will just give the first result like this. It is a detailed and careful study of something to find out more information about it. Where it is also talking about other definition where it is the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way so as to generate new concept, methodologies and understanding. If we go back to the Webster dictionary definition, research is studious inquiry or examination, investigation or experimentation aimed at discovery and interpretation of fact, revision of accepted theories or laws in light of new facts or practical applications of such new or revised theories or laws. So, basically in all this aspect, either we get the terminology like a new findings, a new methodology or establish the fact or prove the fact. In our day to day life, things are happening in various aspects, whether it is like you take the urban issues, urban flooding, climate change. I am just giving reference to the planning and architectural aspect as because this particular course is designed keeping in mind that domain. So, in all such cases, we will find the issues like all of a sudden we are getting the flash flood or maybe we are getting something change in the climate, temperature and maybe it is a simple thing that you know day to day product that we are using. So, probably we are seeing new innovation. It is becoming more user friendly. It is becoming sometimes maybe you know uh, available at the low cost. So, all such cases happening because of certain innovation and research and development. But in achieving all such kind of cases, we have to put a systematic approach. If we are not clear what we are going to achieve by end of it of this process, so then definitely we will not be very confident enough, we will not able to contribute scientifically. But at the same time, it is not always that we will always go for a new findings and something very new all of a certain. It may be something that where we can apply certain theory in some of the other unexplored domain to find out the results. It may be the medical background research, it may be you can say physics, chemistry, math or it can be applied in any sort of domain. But our focus in this entire course will be on the planning and architectural studies where it involves some of the qualitative aspect and quantitative aspect which we cannot ignore. Sometimes also we will talk about the mixed approach. So with that let us understand that as a student, as a researcher, what we normally you know understand by the word research. Research means general publication, research means a degree that you require for you know higher education or for a, your job or research is something where you need to give your 24 into 7, probably it is not. If we can systematically plan our research, if we are very sure about the methodology, probably we can overcome such limitation. Now coming to the objective of research, these are very broad that I put into this slide, but it is not limited to only these four statement. So, what it is? So, the objective of research is to gain familiarity with a phenomena or to achieve a new insight. So, we have to search it, search the fact, establish the law and then we can achieve it through the experiment. If a repetitive experiment will say the same result, we can come to a conclusion and which is very important to prove the fact before we really implement it because sometimes the implementation to the uh, infrastructure, sometimes if we take the other domain like medical science and all, it is also will be on the human trial. So, for that we have to be very sure about it. 
Now the other objective to portray accurately the characteristics of a particular individual, situation or a group. So this is much more of a social science driven research where we investigate the people's perception, their behavior so as to design the facilities. So if unless otherwise you know what people want like say for example, uh, if I wish to do some research on pedestrian facility. So unless we know what pedestrian actually you know uh, desires to have on the roadside or in the sidewalk. We cannot really plan it. We can only give a mechanical solution probably giving some piece of land as a sidewalk, but probably people will not walk on. Similarly, like you take another example that is very simple one, like maybe I take this time example of architectural design. So you are going to make a kids room and in this case uh, you want to make certain color, right. So in this case unless otherwise you know the color psychology or normally what the kids they want, they love. So accordingly it will be not like a room of say something like uh, you know the color that very dull and you know not very pleasant to the kids. So understanding their psychology, understanding their demand we can really make a change the way we want. Now coming to the third point which determines the frequency with which something occurs or with which it associated with something else. So this is much more on establishing the correlation, establishing the relationship uh, that you know uh, that exists. That in that particular case if these things are happening, so as a consequence this will also go ahead. On the similar line also sometimes we test the hypothesis. Again and again we will talk about this hypothesis because this is something probably you heard about from your teacher, your supervisor or maybe you have find in the research papers that hypothesis. So there is always some sort of assumptions that we uh, determine that whether like we just take assumption that increase in uh, say uh, population will make this particular pressure on certain infrastructure that is something like we assume it to be true and we make certain hypothesis on it and then through data we prove it whether the assumption is correct or not. Whether we accept that hypothesis or where we reject the hypothesis. So for the beginning this introduction class uh, probably I am not going to discuss in detail the hypothesis but yes we will have a module will discuss that different type of hypothesis, how to test it, depending on the data, how can we uh, prove or you know how, how we just come up with that hypothesis conclusion part. So in this case the test hypothesis of a causal relationship between variables, this is very important because in especially for the planning and architecture things are not like only univariate, like there is nothing like only one or two variables and that is going to make all the decision all the time. In some cases maybe, but most of the cases it is dependent on multiple variables. If you keep on changing each of them, you are come up, uh, you will get different kind of results. So for that we have to be very sure about it that what we are going to change and also we notice the consequences of that. So with that broad objective of research as I already mentioned that these are just few pointers but you know you can get even more such kind of text in different textbook or uh, even different kind of web sources. Now coming to the motivation in research, why we require to do research? Okay, in that case the first point is very simple in many cases like as a student, as a like uh, UG, PG or PhD student obviously get a research degree for benefits in academic and higher study. We cannot ignore it, let us, let us be very frank about it that we need that degree for certain qualification. But more than that, that is not everything. Even after PhD, your life if you choose to be a researcher in the R&D sector or maybe you want to be like in some academics, so your research will continue. In such cases, the second pointer is very important, take up some challenge in solving unsolved problems in the theoretical and applied research domain. Sometimes somebody like 
100 years ago has given certain theory. Now at the present context, you know, we have seen even in some physics like, you know, uh, the theory given by Rutherford, later on it is modified by Niels Bohr and like that it is a continuous process. Like we keep on improving those kind of theories and when we talk about the applied research which is much more applicable to the planning and architecture I do believe. So there we keep on uh, like taking challenges that how efficient we can make a window so that it will protect from the harsh weather at the same time it will make the aesthetics or how we design a particular floor which will be very safe for the elderly people like they will not sleep at the same time it will not be very costly so all such kind of uh, you know objectives that will pick up as a applied research and we try to solve it sometimes through perception sometimes through experiment sometimes is a mixed media that I already uh, mixed method that I already told earlier. Now at the same time doing research will also give you the intellectual joy of doing something creative and new addition. Then get noticed in research community this is very important maybe sometimes we do very excellent research say for a master student or maybe in the UG student nowadays in architecture and other domain in final year even with the new education policy and all there is emphasis on doing uh, the thesis by research. So in all such cases we end up with a good thesis and normally we just submit it to get a grade and then we just complete that. Maybe that thesis will just uh, you know lay uh, in the library or so but out of that if you just make a presentation in a conference you publish a paper so that will be wonders you will be noticed in the research community that this particular student this particular researcher is doing the research in the field of the respective domain. Again now when we talk about the United Nations sustainable development goals so we are also doing research because all 17 goals that I will discuss in some other lecture all these goals and their scope in architecture and planning so we are doing it for our society because sustainability perhaps we all know what we have to use our resources in current time in such a way that it will not be exhausted and our future generation can use it effectively. And other thing is the search for excellence if we ignore all other points so it is again a personal choice that okay I want to do something I want to make some excellent contribution to the society to the field that I uh, am trained uh, with. Now coming to the research in planning and architecture and again this is just a limited few pointers and it can be anything related to that. So the broad few points here the re issues related to the urbanization and growth we keep on telling the urbanization is happening rapidly like urban growth is happening like that that there is a tremendous pressure on the resources and other thing. So how to solve it how efficiently we make it. So this is some area where research is going on climate change and its impact is a not only a very local issue or national issue is a global issue. So due to climate change many of the unseen consequences happening like plus flood or maybe in such cases there is change in the environment sustainable development goals then building performance this is on architecture that how we make our building efficient what material we will use for the construction so which will make it you know efficient then we talk about the urban mobility which is very important for the transportation utilities and services so in such cases like you know all these water supply sanitation power supply solid waste management so these are things that of you know talk about this urban utilities and services. So there also we need certain research to make it efficient how efficiently we can do all these operations so that that will minimize the cost also make it efficient and done within the time. Now how can we ignore this artificial intelligence and machine learning you must have heard about everywhere nowadays probably you are also using this generative AI chat GPT 
and even when you search in Google and all, they also have certain, uh, you know, such kind of application of AI and ML. So, for architecture and planning, we should not uh, put ourselves or restrict ourselves to not to dig into that particular aspect and it is happening how to apply. So, in some of the module, we will also talk about the emerging tools and techniques, especially on AI ML uh, that we can apply in the planning and architectural study. Resilience planning, in recent times at least if we do not need to go back like last 5 or 6 years, we have witnessed certain uh, unprecedented rain flash flood in some of the cities where it, it, it uh, actually occurred after several decades. So, in such cases like we are not prepared. So, that preparedness make it things resilience, the community participation in that resilience aspect. So, all such things are a research domain where people are uh, doing research. Tourism is again one, one of such like where that can also give us certain economy in return and then there are certain kind of tangible intangible high heritage that we should retain. Especially if we take example of India, so we are very rich in all such kind of heritage and there are certain kind of tourism potential in some of the areas. All the policies which actually make that difference in you know what is actually happening and what it need to be and many more. So, in this case also like whether we talk about the water stress, whether we are going for the city level thing. So, there is no end to it like even I very briefly talked about all this aspect, but each of them can be discussed in detail. Okay. This is something uh, interesting slide I would say, you know student or a research scholar or maybe a researcher day to day life. So, here like normally it is something if you are doing experiment, so each day you have to note the experiment, you have to compare it, then you have to publish it. So, it is a thing which is maybe you sometimes feel very repetitive, sometimes you fail in that experiment, sometimes you just got a rejection uh, from a journal, so that demotivates you. So, all these things are happening which involves time, we involves your idea intellectual, this needs lot of data to be managed, proper analysis, then you have publication, then you need to also present it in front of your jury, examiner or conference, then delivery and finally, once you satisfy all the criteria, you will get that desired degree. It may be your PG, it may be your PhD, it may be the postdoc, but in all such cases, one thing is very important that is time and also the input that you are giving. If you just are not very sure what you need to do and you keep on just doing the repetitive work, it will not lead to the desired result sometimes. So, with that, this is again maybe like uh, something that we all love to eat that in the left hand side, this is also a burger and there are so much of ingredients that, you know you have some vegetables, cheese etcetera and also in the right hand side you have another one where it seems like the first one is so delicious, so attractive and we love to eat it. But in the other one it is not that attractive and also probably it is not properly made. So, the main point is that ingredients are not enough right methodology is very important. So, if you have all the spices with you and you try to cook certain dish and if the process is not correct, when to add what spices, how much time you need to cook it. So, it will not give you that desired result that is the case in this and sometimes even if for example, we just assume that okay, by looking at the picture, we may not say the taste of these two product. Maybe the first one maybe taste is not that good, but the second one even it looks ugly maybe taste fine. Yeah, I, I do agree in that aspect as well. So, that is also happening in our research. Maybe we are doing a fantastic research, but we are not able to communicate it properly. We are not able to write it properly, get it published in a good journal. Then that 
also lead to some sort of wastage. So, for that right methodology is important and so true for a good research. So, that is the backbone or maybe you can say the motivation to create this particular course for specially for you know giving emphasis to the planning and architecture study. The role of methodology in research, the methodology in research strategy outlines the step involved in the research process. So, it is a process. If you are clear about your process, if you know all the stages, rest of the things will be easy to you. It is not like you know cluelessly we are going here and there, we are doing something and try to write something, that will not help. So, some of the role like it is a systematic approach to attain goals of research that always a research will have a aim and objectives. That if my aim is to make something like you know congestion free street. So, if that is a broad aim then there should be some objective. We cannot simply say that I want very you know fresh air, there should not be any such kind of issues with the pollution. So, first we have to define those problem, we have to understand the root cause of those problems and then how to solve it. If we simply say that remove all the cars from the road, automatically it will be all right, but that is not practical. We cannot remove all the vehicles from the road, but there we can do some mechanism, we can reduce the number of vehicles, we can change the you know fuel, we can go to some of the alternative energy which can reduce the pollution. So, those kind of research uh, is required. It also defines stages and interdependency interdependen among the stages. That when you have say two, three objectives of your research, for each objective it is very important to identify the task to be performed to that objective. And then out of that objective is there any findings that you would like to use in your next objectives? So, that you need to establish at the very beginning. Also, it provides rationally for selecting appropriate data type and methods. This is a very common problem, you know. I have seen uh, in my uh, research career so far that many a times uh, uh, we are very much clueless that what type of data we require and for that type of data what kind of methods we should use. We should not just try each and everything and then finally come up with something which may not be fit for our research. So, a methodology will also determine this is something through you know different kind of literature study, different kind of case studies. We have to be very sure that okay for my research objective, this is the data type. This type of whether it is like a observation survey is required, whether it is a perception survey required or where we do not need anything, we just need certain kind of secondary data or some experiment that we need to conduct. So, that is very important. It also provides the rationale for selecting current analysis. See, this is another area where we do mistakes at least when we do not have much idea or maybe at the beginning of our research career that we keep on doing certain kind of statistical test, but whether that is applicable, whether that test lead to some kind of critical findings or will that help? We keep on doing it and then maybe that will make some kind of counter argument or that will create much more confusion and then we are clueless about the findings. Most important part, it helps to keep researcher on track, making the process smooth, effective and manageable. Because along with the task that you perform, also you need to figure out the timeline. It is not the thing that you keep on doing endlessly, means you can do research. Obviously, as a researcher when you move ahead after completion of your masters or PhD, you desire to make uh, postdoctoral uh, research or maybe even you want to put yourself in a R and D activities. So, it will keep on going, but for one particular research or a goal it should not be like infinite. So, in that case you have to define that ok, I will go for uh, this particular three objectives, each objective probably will take this month and all and within next three to four years or you know two years or when it is a masters where you, the scope is very limited in one year you have to do certain kind of project. 
So, you have to define that timeline very effectively. It is not a good idea that when you take up that, okay, I am going to do a research which will target the SDG 6, like maybe which is related to the clean water, that I will solve all the problem of water from my country. It is not possible. There are many aspects of it, but whatever you are targeting, that should be very crisp, crystal clear to you, so that within the time that is you are thinking of or which is a possible time for you, for your institution, the minimum time and other thing. So, that you need to think and then accordingly you have to plan and a good methodology will give you that kind of freedom, where you are very clear, very systematically you can you know at, uh, attempt those kind of steps and you go on. That is very important. Okay, coming for this particular course, uh, which is the research methodology for planning and architectural studies, what we are going to learn at the end of this course. A basic understanding of research methodology for planning and architectural studies and for this, like you may get certain kind of such, uh, you know, module courses in other domain, but in this particular case. I will show you some of the case studies and I will show you those kind of challenges that we faced while conducting those research. So, that it will help you that what not to do during that kind of steps, because that will help you to save certain time and think in a right direction. You will also get a knowledge about research design, methods and techniques. You will also get knowledge on the data type, which is very important many a times we do mistake there. Sampling, right sampling, what kind of sampling is required for my data, my research. It is not that someone else has applied this simple random sampling, so I will also go for that. It may not work for my case. Sample size, this is again, you know, very common questions. Maybe some of you uh, can get this, like when you put these things in a journal, your research in a journal or you are presenting it. Always there is a question, very common question you can say FAQ that what is your sample size, is it representative. So, that also we will get to know that depending on the research type, how to calculate it and how to fix it. Then the questionnaire preparation, that is also very important because whenever you prepare a questionnaire, each question should contribute something to your research findings. If you find that some of the questions are just you know not giving you any clue, better not to put it. You will also develop an understanding of conducting quantitative, qualitative and mixed method and we will discuss that in details in uh, some uh, module of some weeks. Literature review and research writing. So, literature review is the first step you may say to find out the research gap and then there are different ways to do the literature review. It is not simply we just search something and we get certain 5-6 papers and then we say that ok, so this research is new that what we are going to do. So, I will take you through those kind of uh, experience, those kind of findings which will help you. Then also as because it is related to the planning and architecture, I thought to also give you some input in the special method, which is definitely I will show you some of the case studies where you know GIS, MCDM, those kind of tools and techniques used for the planning research. Okay, so uh, now let us understand the overall content of this course and as I already mentioned earlier in my uh, you know promo video that this particular course has been designed in uh, such a way that it will have like all together like 12 weeks and each week will have 5 lectures. So, resulting uh, the 60 lectures, right. So, in this case definitely like first we will try to understand different theory and concepts and later on we will try to understand those theory and concepts or that particular research process through case studies. So, let us have a look about the content. So, week 1, so this is the introduction lecture that today we are doing. After that, we will discuss about the type of research, different type of research that you know, it may be applied research, it may be the empirical research, it may be some sort of you know, concept research. So, we will try to 
discuss each of them. Next, we'll discuss again an uh, interesting topic on research methods versus methodology. Like definitely there are certain kind of difference and many a times we use this word uh, in a similar way, but there are certain sort of differences. So, we'll discuss that. Then we'll discuss about the different, you know, common issues and challenges in planning and architectural research. Next in week 2, we will discuss in detail about the research process and the research writing, both are very important. Even if you know the process very well, but if you do not know how to write it effectively, so then definitely that is not desirable. At the same time, if you are very good at writing, but you do not know the research process, so then you cannot come up with the desired uh, results that you want to convey. Then we move to week number 3, where we will discuss about another important topic of literature review and then types of literature review like bibliometric analysis, systematic literature review, meta analysis. So, that through that exhaustive literature review, you can find um, the you know gap in literature and then accordingly you can design your research questions. And then also in this aspect, the referencing of the past literature and also I will show you some of the demo there. Week number 4, in this case uh, particular week, we discuss about the type of data in research, then measurement and scaling technique for such kind of uh, data collection and type of surveys. Week 5 consists of sample size calculation, sampling techniques, probabilistic and non-probabilistic sampling then source of data, primary, secondary and other sources and then preparation of survey questionnaire. Some tips that I will share that which can help you to you know omit some of the mistakes that we do in the questionnaire. With that we move to uh, week number 6, where we discuss about methods of data collection, ethics in data management which is very important and another important aspect of, about knowing the clarity between similarity index and the plagiarism, right. After that, we will move to uh, week number 7, where we discuss about the process of the data of whatever data you have collected through survey, then how to interpret that data, interpreting data and then descriptive statistics, representation of those data in a graphical, tabular, spatial or any other form to convey the findings in effective manner to the readers. We will move to week number 8 then with important topic of hypothesis testing, parametric and non-parametric test. After that, we will discuss the quantitative research approach with a number of case studies on quantitative research in week number 9. And in the same line, week 10 we will we'll discuss about the qualitative research approach and then about some of the case studies. Week 11 will discuss another important aspect that is something like uh, mixed method research and the case study, special method, special in planning research and the case study and also we discussed the basics of behavioral research methods. And week 12, the last week, we will try to understand the simulation based research, big data, which nowadays we are talking about, the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning in architecture and planning research. Then also, I will give you some sort of idea about certain programming language and software, very basics that you know we have used and they are useful. Some of them are open source, you can easily get access to those. And then the last topic that we will discuss about the emerging research potential in planning and architecture. So, with that we conclude this 60 lectures and definitely in some cases some topic we will discuss in subsequent lectures to you know cover all the aspect of it. And along with theory as I already mentioned that we will also go through some case studies which can make things clear to you. Okay. So, with that uh, I conclude here for this introduction and hope to interact with you more and definitely whenever you will have certain doubt and all, please write us to that forum 
uh, and will definitely solve your query. So, all together will make this course successful so that there is some clarity on how to do the research. Thank you. References you can find some of the books and there are plenty available, but these are very few which I found interesting and that helped me during my own uh, PhD and you know after that the research that I am doing. Thank you.